Hello and welcome back to Tea with Tracy. Come and see you live every Tuesday at 12, spilling relevant tips, trends, and talk in all things real estate and home ownership related. Well, today we are continuing on with our local election series. Today we are going to be talking about state representatives. What is a state representative? What do they do? What areas do they serve? And to join us today and give us those answers is candidate for state representative, Donnie Steele. Without further ado, let's get Donnie on to join us. Hi, Donnie. How are you today? I'm in my car. I hope that's okay. Oh, yeah, that's completely fine. Thank you so much. I know you're so busy these days, and I truly appreciate you joining us today. And I know you've been on the show before in different capacities, and uh, so I'm excited to have you back to to tell us about uh, the state representative position. That is a local position, um, but you are representing a group of communities, Lake Orion included, at the state level. Correct. That's right. Yeah. So could That's you right. That's so right. so tell us a little bit more about what does a what does a state representative do? What areas you know do they cover? How many are there? I know that's so many questions all at once. <laughs> okay. So I'll just so let the state of Michigan and it's based on the number of representatives based on our population. And uh, right now we have 110 state representatives in the state of Michigan, and we are uh, a half of the legislative body at the state. So you have the executive, which is your governor, you have the legislative, which is your Senate and your House of Representatives, and then you have the judicial portion of, you know, remember the old civics lessons that there's three Mm -hmm. portions to make sure that our government is being safe and secure for the people because we're for the people and um, we have 110 state representatives and they're uh, they represent roughly 90,000 people per per district. And um, so the size of the district is completely based on the number of people within the area. So you can understand, you can see that the Detroit metro area is going to have a lot smaller districts right. because we have a higher density of population. Whereas like the UP, it's the, it's the whole UP. Right. And I think it comes down a ways too. So, um, so my area or our area, cause you live in Orion township yes. is uh, Orion, a little portion of Oakland township. Okay. And then we have uh, half of Auburn Hills and uh, the city of Bloomfield Hills and eight townships in the township of Bloomfield. So okay. Bloomfield has been cut up. Orion is whole, which I'm very happy with. Yes. And cause that's where our hearts are is physically and literally our hearts are in Orion. And so I was glad that we have, um, we were able to keep our district in one, our, our town in one piece. Yes. So. Dragons, we are united, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, okay, so that's great. So, wow, there are a lot of state representatives, Um, but that makes that makes sense. I mean, because the way that you can best serve and hear directly from, you know, the people that you're serving is if you have a territory that is manageable. So and 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 that's still a lot. Ninety thousand is still quite quite a a few people. Right. Right. And and, you know, it's kind of like. um, the state representative's role is to make sure that the government, which governs our state, mm-hmm. is making sure that the people's interests are being met. Okay. So, you know, like your departments um, are like, you know, your Eagle and the DNR and everybody's heard all those, you know, mm-hmm. there's probably 600 departments. Those are your executive branch. They're governed by the governor. And we, as the representatives want to make sure that your government is um, doing the job to the best to the best interest of the residents. So we're like right. the eyes, and that's why the closer you know. So you're, in, I'm in. If if I win, or I hope to win, um, November eighth is that uh, you would I would spend three days in Lansing, but the rest of the time I would be in my district, which happens to be uh, that area in which I. Um, rattled off. Okay. So yeah, so you'll be spending time in the district hearing from the people and then taking those voices and opinions and, you know, what we want in our back to Lansing when you when you go there for um, different meetings. 
So, and Correct. we we, we have yes. some uh, Donnie Steele fans on. I just read a few of the comments. It says, "Woo, let's go, Donnie!" And then uh, oh, when you and history genius said, "When you need strength, go with steel." So, <laughs> um, I like those little tags. Yeah, lines. those are great. <laughs> those are great. Um, so, tell us a little bit about so the term, right? Because I know different positions have different term lengths. So, for a state representative, how long of a term would you be serving? What? Well, it's um, right now we have term limits. And so uh, the the maximum, provided that this ballot initiative doesn't pass, the term limits are two, three sets of two years. So two, two, and two. And that's the max that you can serve in, in the House. And the Senate is two terms, but their terms are four and four. So they can serve. So, and if the term limits that are set in place right now Theoretically, I could serve six in the House okay. and eight in the Senate, and okay. that would be 14. That's the maximum that I could serve um, in the House and the Senate. Okay. So, And, and I don't necessarily want to jump in, but if, if that's okay, I'll just jump into that one ballot yeah. um, initiative, which would allow you to serve collectively 12 years. Okay. Um, so it's actually reduced. But I could serve all 12 in the House or I could serve all 12 in the Senate or I could do a variety of the two. Okay. That's what that is. That. I think it's number and I should know because the numbers are <laughs> universal across the state. And I think that might be number three might be number. The, no, it might be. It's number two. Number. OK. Number two on the ballot. So. So your term limits, which that makes sense, um, you know, because if there's someone who feels um, suited more for a state (laughs) representative or for the Senate, then, you know, you can continue to serve in that capacity as opposed to, you know, at max six years in in three two year terms for state representative or at max eight years two four year terms in the Senate. Correct. Right. Yeah. And 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 this is all Michigan. Yeah, this is just Michigan because federally there are no limits. You know, the senators can serve forever and the Congress can serve forever. And I think the idea was when they did these term limits is that people didn't make a career out of a career politician, as they would say, because the idea of your political officials going to Lansing or the federal government is that they maintain the interest that doesn't serve them. We are here to serve the people. Right. And if I'm here to serve myself, my career is being a political official. And that I won't make, the idea is I won't make rules and policies that would hurt my position as a career politician. That I'm supposed to take my experience that I have gleaned over my lifetime and bring that perspective of an open perspective into Lansing or into the federal government. But the career politicians, you know, the only way that you get elected is to have people that support you and then the political action committees and that they are the ones who support you. And then that that comes into the black hole that we would like to get away from right. from the term limits. I'm, I'm going back to the term limits. Yeah. <laughs> but Which, what ends up happening wait, wait. is that you lose all the leadership because of these short terms. And that's what I would happening in the state of Michigan. As soon as you like figure out where the bathroom is and where to park, (laughs) boy, you got to go out and run again. So it's like, right. We'd like to make make that a little bit longer. So you have better leadership. Right. Have a little little more time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. A little more time. And we do have, let's see, a Festerman said that it is proposal one. That is the term limit change. Um, Because I know there's going to be um, three different state proposals on the ballot, right? There's going to be the term limit change, which is the one we're chatting about today. Um, And then there's going to be two others, one with uh, reproductive rights and then another one that is in reference to ballot boxes. So um, what, what I would like, and I know you would as well, like to encourage voters to do is make sure that you are going out and seeking information in advance of November 8th. Make sure you're thoroughly reading what each of the proposals states, Um, you know, because some of the language, sometimes you get into the, you know, you get there with your ballot and you're like, well, wait, I'm not sure I completely understand. So you want to just make sure that you're going in on November 8th, you're confident in what it is that the proposal is stating so that you can cast your vote the way that you truly want it to be cast. So... Agreed. And I, yeah. you know, Tracy, and I just want to add on because those are the three state proposals. Mm-hmm. Um, but Orion has a fourth, which is to renew the millage 
for the parks and recreation. Yes, we had Aaron Watley on last week. Yes, and he gave us Perfect. information about that. Yes. So. And then and then the and then the fifth one would be the transit authority and I think that you have Chris coming on about mm-hmm. that one as well too. Yep. But that is something that please do the research on it as well too because I'm uh, yeah. Well, yeah. So I'm Chris, not in favor of that one. Uh, so Chris <laughs> Barnett my, is coming on sense. in a couple of weeks from today, and he's going to give us all of the information as to what that uh, that millage entails. Last week we had Aaron Watley on, and Aaron was a great guest. It was just really like pure, like great information. So if you didn't hear about that one, and you are in Orion, you're going to want to go back and and catch uh, last week's episode on that. Um, so 110 full-time state representatives for Michigan. That's, you know, before chatting with you, I, I never really realized there were quite so many. And then I believe you said 64 senators as well. So No, no? It, I might have said that, but I, it's less than that. It's 38. Okay. 38. Okay. So, but still uh, about 150 officials, you know, representing our state. That's, uh, that's amazing. So, um so what uh, what else about the state representative position should we should we know and understand? How let me, I guess um, let me ask you this: How does a state representative get information from the people um, to take back when you go to Lansing? If there's there's something that's being discussed, um, I know you are you're very well connected. You know, so for you personally, you you know quite a few people, and you're always having conversations and out chatting. Um, is that typically how state representatives will, you know, get a feel for what their, their community? Yeah. 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 You know, and I think that's a really good question, Tracy, because I think that right now I'm in the process of like trying to hit as many doors mm-hmm. physically, knock on people's doors and they're like, uh, yeah, what are you trying to sell? <laughs> Not and too many like, people I- come up to our doors anymore, unless it's like a delivery. <laughs> No, and it's funny because yeah. people come to the door, they open it up, and they look at my feet expecting a package, and they look up, <laughs> and I startle them. It's like, okay, yes, there are humans at your door. Yeah. So, so I found that I think that what would be really helpful for the state representative is not only the people, of course, the people, but you going to, like, um, the township boards, because if somebody sat in our board meetings, and we don't always have a lot of people at our board meetings, because I am the treasurer of Orion Township, and we have board meetings twice a month, 12 months out of the year, and we discuss the business of the township, but you can find so much about what's going on in the town, what businesses are coming in, what are they struggling with in the local, um, in, maybe in these local towns and cities. Mm-hmm. Um, so me going to not only the boards, but like the school board, the township boards, the village boards, what, boy, you're going to really learn a lot of what's going on. And then in addition, so knock on the doors, but then you have to go to the business meetings too, because you have to see what are the chamber people? What, what, what's going on in the chamber of commerce? What's going on Rotary? What's going on in the optimist club? So it's like, because they bring a philanthropy or the lions group, you know, they bring a philanthropy to the table but the, the chambers are bringing the small businesses to the table and you have to hear what the business is because you don't, you can't just represent one and not represent the other three or the four or the five, because right. you know, what, what, what you want to happen at the school board is not necessarily cohesive what's happening at the village or cohesive what's happening at somebody's front door because, you know, gosh, they can't get out their driveway because they have, um, the roads are so bad or they're not being plowed or they're not being graded. And so you need to know what the residents are feeling as well too. So it's a, it's a collective. And I feel that I'm experienced in the sense because that's what we do at the township level. We have to take everybody's interest at heart to do a job and look at it holistically to what you can make the best decision holistically for society as a whole. And that's what, that's what I believe our job is. Yes. And you know, I've known you for a number of years. I know you have a very pure heart and really a a servant's heart and you've served Orion Township very well. And I mean, is, what is the reason? Is that the reason that you, you decided you wanted to take it to the next level and serve a greater area? Yes. I just like 
my, and I, this is an old story and I tell everybody and they're probably already sick of hearing it is that I got involved cause I was a realtor like you uh-huh. and I got out of the business cause it, I was working all the time and I had little kids and I said, okay, I'm just going to take a step back. And I got bored real fast yeah. <laughs> and I said, well, you know, I'm going to help out. I'm going to go like, I don't know, we need a safety path to get from my house to the local school. And so that's what I did is I got on the safety path committee and I was like, oh, I really like the business portion of the township. And I always laugh. The safety path is in. It took 10 years, but we have a safe <laughs> route from our house to the school. And I thought there was resources available. There was money available, but it it wasn't getting done. And I believe sometimes you need a pusher, you know, yeah, like a voice. Hey, guys, yeah, yeah. yes, let's get let's get at least what I think is needed done. Yeah. And and so you got and you can't just. No, no offense, talk on social media right. about how terrible the world is right. without putting your feet in the fire and yeah. saying, okay, by gosh, I'm going to sit at those boring safety path meetings and get a path, even if it takes me forever and have the perseverance. You know, it's not everybody wants to do that, but that's how you have to get stuff done. Yeah. And that's what I think at the state level, I want to have that oversight so we can get more stuff done. So our community is better. Our schools are better. Our roads are better and everything's better in the area in which we live because I live here too. Right. I want better too. So. Right. Uh, well, I, I appreciate you, Donnie, and I appreciate you coming on and giving us so much information today about the state representative position and, and your, your reasoning for running for the position. Um, again, you know, make sure you're, you're, you're getting out there. If you watch these episodes, this, the five week series of, um, the local election series, you'll get some great information, but make sure you're getting out, doing your research so that you are an informed voter when you get to the polls on November 8th. So, yeah. Yes. And, and if any, and if anybody can reach out to me, it's DonnieSteel.com. It's got okay. my website. It's got my phone number. Um, you have any questions? It's got my email on there, DonnieSteel.com. All right. Well, thank you so much, Donnie. Thank you for coming on and joining us today. Thank you all for tuning in, whether live or on the replay. And we'll see you next week again for the next segment. We're going to be talking about a local school board position and what that position entails. So tune in if you're interested in that. Thank you all for Thanks, viewing. Tracy. Thanks, Donnie. We'll see okay. you all. <laughs> no, that's sorry. okay. We'll okay. see you next week. Okay. I'll see you with Tracy. Okay. <laughs> Bye-bye. Okay. Bye, Tracy. Bye.